exploring. Oh, finally, the weather near me right now is starting to get warmer and sunnier and we've been able to get outside and guess what we did? We went for a hike. Oh, I love hikes. I didn't really like them in the past, but now I'm starting to really enjoy them. We go outside, we walk, we climb up the mountain or the rocks, and you get to see different wildlife than typical, like maybe say at the pond. That's something that we explored together. Remember that one? That was fun. But in the forest, you get to see a lot of new animals that we haven't really talked about yet. And I'm excited because I did just ask Mickey what the American Sign Language was for some of the words that I'm going to introduce to you. So, I get really excited about the forest because it's a very different area, like I was saying, than what I have maybe just say in my backyard. So I was wondering, have you ever gone to the forest? Do you like it or don't you like it? What do you think about it is so different than, say, a pond? Right, one of the biggest things are the trees. Now, tree in sign language is this. Can you do that? You kind of put your hand on the bottom of your elbow, right? Almost like putting it in the ground. And you shake a little bit on the top, like where the leaves would be. Now, when we're talking about forest, what you do is you do the same thing start out with the tree, but you move it across like this. That means like a lot of trees. And that's what it's like walking into the forest. And sometimes you can hardly see the sky because of all the different leaves that are growing of all the different types of trees. That's always a fun activity that you can do when you go for a hike. Look around you. Start to notice things are different. Maybe if you see a leaf that's fallen down onto the ground, you can take it and put it inside a bag and then go back with your family or friends or whoever you're with that's your trusted adult that can bring you online and look up the leaves. Try to identify or name the type of tree it is that you have that leaf from. Maybe you can play a matching game with it. There's so many things that you can do all around you they're free and cheap and real easy to do, but they mean so much because you're learning about your environment and the things around you. Well, I'm so excited about this theme that I can't wait. But before we do that, I need us to go over our very important alphabet. Now, I have gotten so many messages from different people that they've been practicing and this is becoming almost too easy for them. Wow, I like to know that. That means you've been practicing and you're learning just exactly what you should be doing. And pretty soon you're going to be using all these letters and sounds to make words and draw a book and write a story with it. How about you start writing or drawing cards to help people feel better? That's something that you can do and you would be being kind, right? We've talked about being very kind and helpful and friendly and being a change for good in this world. And that's something that your new skills will allow you to do. Well, hey, I also heard from a group that I wanted to mention today because they have been watching my videos and have been learning alongside of us. Let me get their name. Just because I don't want to make a mistake. So, this is for the Arrow Academy for Pre-K-3 with Mrs. G. Wow, you guys, I heard that you've been watching and that you've been learning. So exciting. Thank you for coming along on our learning adventure. I can't imagine all the great things that you are going to be doing with all this new learning. So let's get right into it. Ready? I say the letter, I name the picture, and then I make the sound that that letter makes. So it would sound like this. A, apple, a. Ah. Nice job. Real super easy, right? Good. Let's do it all together. A, apple, a. Ah. B, bat, b. C, cat, k. D, dog, d. 
E, Ed, E, F, Fun, F. Make sure you form that right. I'm not putting my tongue out there. That makes a different sound. Right now we're making the sound. G, Game, G, H, Hat, H, I, Itch, I, J, Jug, J, K, Kite, K, L, Lamp, L, M, Man, M, N, Nut, N. Did you see the difference in my mouth? M, N. O, Octopus, A, P, Pan, P, Q, U, Queen, Qu, R, Rat, R, S, Snake, S, Snake. T, top, t, U, up, a, uh, V, van, v, make those lips vibrate, v. W, wind, w, X, fox, x, Y, yellow, y, Z, zebra, z. Good job! Wow, that's great. Good work, everybody. Well, I have some really fun songs that we can sing about all the different forest animals. Let's learn the ASL word for each of them before we start. So we already did tree and forest. Nice job. Now I'm going to teach you the sign for owl. Owl makes a sound like this. Hoo hoo, hoo hoo, right? So now, what do we know about owls? Their eyes. So you put your two hands like this and make owl. Good, I like it. And bear. And let's see, deer. Deer. And moose. So a deer and a moose, they have antlers. So deer. Moose. Moose, you kind of push up and out because they have really big ones. <laughs> and let me think, what was the other one that we learned? Squirrel. Put two fingers together like this. Squirrel. What do you think? Great. Wow, you have learned so many different signs. Ah, I hope that you have room to learn even more because we're always going to learn some more. Okay, so now we're going to get ready to sing our songs. Now, the first one that I have is forest animal sounds. We already learned about the owl, and it says, hoo hoo, right? Okay, so let's get ready. This is to the tune of the wheels on the bus. The owl in the tree says, hoo hoo hoo, hoo hoo hoo, hoo hoo hoo. The owl in the tree says, hoo all in the forest. What else? The bear. Can you try it? Just do it two times like this. The bear. The bear in the cave says, rawr, 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 rawr. The bear in the cave says, all in the forest. Nice job. Thanks for singing along. You didn't leave me hanging out there too long. How about, ooh, we didn't learn this sign. Hmm, I'm going to have to learn it. The beaver. What does a beaver do? Do you know? A beaver has two big teeth and he likes to chew or crunch on the branches or the trees and chop the trees down and he uses them to help build his nest or his den. <gasps> this is quite the learning adventure for me. I need to go and do some more research. Thanks guys. This is how it's done. You see, even though I'm older, I don't know everything and it's a good time for me to practice what I'm saying to you. I need to go and do some research and that's okay. All right, so the beaver, what did I tell you? He uses his teeth to chew or crunch. Let's say crunch. The beaver chewing the tree says crunch, 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 crunch. The beaver chewing the tree says crunch, 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 all in the forest. Now, 
This is where the fun begins. You get to come up with more parts of this song that I don't have. What other animal? A deer? A rabbit? Yeah, rabbits can live in the forest too. What would they be doing in our song? What sounds would they make? It's up to you. Now it's your turn to come up with some songs and some words. And if you do, take a video if it's okay and maybe send me an email. Tell me about it and maybe I can sing the song again and add your part. Okay, this one is to the tune of the little teapot and it's about an owl. Um, I'm a great big owl as you can see. I live up high in a tree. All the other birds wake me up when they play because I like to sleep during the day. Did you know that about owls? Hmm. Maybe you didn't. Now you know something new. Well, owls do sleep during the day and they're awake at night. And that's when they go out and hunt for their food. Mm. Okay, how about this one? It's called Mary Went Into the Forest. Now you can change the name to be anyone, maybe even your own name, or maybe you can sing it with your family and put their names into the song. It's only up to you. It's up to you. And it's to the bear went over the mountain. So it would be like this. Mary went into the forest. Mary went into the forest. Mary went into the forest to see what she could see. She saw a big black bear. She saw a big black bear. She saw a big black bear hiding behind the tree. <gasps> Be careful. That is not a fun thing to come up across while you're walking in the forest. We don't want to scare a bear and we don't ever want to try to reach out and touch a bear even though they look like they'd be, be so cozy and cuddly to touch. Those are things that we cannot do out in the forest all by ourselves or even with our family. We have to be very smart and think about it. You should look it up and know why. Because when we see them when we're at a zoo, or maybe if you've ever been to a circus, or anywhere that you might have seen a bear, that means that they've usually have been raised by people, and they have learned that people give them food, but they're usually behind something that we can't get to them. And there's a reason for that. Because when they are out in their forest, or wherever it is that they're living, like in a cave, they don't know and they think that we, may, we are there maybe to hurt them or take their food away. And they don't know how to talk and say, hey, buddy, get out of here. They only know how to use their claws, the things that they have that help protect them. So it may not be what you're expecting. So never try to reach out or go and chase and touch a bear. Okay, so these songs are just for fun, right? Now, let's go back to our song how to tell you that very important information. Johnny went into the forest. Johnny went into the forest. Johnny went into the forest to see what he could see. He saw a feathery owl. He saw a feathery owl. He saw a feathery owl sitting in a tree. You see? That's fun. What can you think of? This is your time. Get those muscles moving in your brain. Think, 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 think about some of the different things. How about use your name, whatever your name might be. How about I use my name, Amy. Amy saw a little squirrel. I could see that. And what does a squirrel do? He runs around the tree. Good. So come up with your own. And remember, send them to me so I can sing it too, and then I can say hello to you. How about this one? In the forest, the farmer in the dell. The farmer in the dell goes like this. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Okay. Trees grow in the forest. Trees grow in the forest with bark and roots and sap and cones. Trees go in the forest. Animals live in the forest. Animals live in the forest. 
In logs and nests and hollow trees, animals live in the forest. Not so bad. Now here's a really fun one to get some of that energy out and to practice our movement and our listening skills and following directions. See, just singing songs isn't only singing songs, although that would be fun enough. But sometimes we do a lot of learning by listening to songs and doing, repeating, answering, and thinking. They're so important for us to do. That's why I do so many with you. But this one is called Brown Bear, Brown Bear. And we kind of done something like this in the past. But we're going to do it again because today's a new day. So I'm going to do the ones that I have here. We can add, we can take away. It's only limited by what we think. So are you ready to get up and move? Make sure you have enough room. Don't bump into anyone. Here we go. Brown Bear, Brown Bear, please stand up. Brown bear, brown bear, turn around. Good. Brown bear, brown bear, touch the ground. Reach down. Good. Brown bear, brown bear, reach up high. Brown bear, brown bear, touch the sky. Go up on your tippy toes. Can you touch it? Uh. Brown bear, brown bear, bend down low. Brown bear, brown bear, touch your toes. Brown bear, brown bear, stand back up. Brown bear, brown bear, touch your nose. Brown bear, brown bear, go upstairs. Just pretend you're marching upstairs. Good, good. <laughs> brown bear, brown bear, say your prayers. Brown bear, brown bear, turn out the light. Or boop. <laughs> brown bear, brown bear, say good night. But wait, don't really leave me. That's just part of the silly song. So you can change it any which way you, maybe make it about eating dinner, maybe make it about taking a bath, anything you want, go for it. Okay, now the gray squirrel. Gray squirrel, do you remember squirrel? Like two little, yep, they got it. Okay, this is just one using our fingers. We're gonna get them moving. We want these muscles to get to work because they're so important for us for when we start to write or draw or do different activities. So important. Gray squirrel, gray squirrel, swish your fluffy tail. See my tail moving? Pretend you have a big tail or you can move your whole body, move those hips, get them moving. Gray squirrel, gray squirrel, swish your fluffy tail. Do it again. Wrinkle up your little nose. <laughs> Hold a nut between your toes. Oop, I can't lift up my feet high enough for you to see, but you can hold a ball in between your feet. That's really good practice for you. And we could pretend we're being a squirrel holding a nut. Gray squirrel, gray, gray squirrel, swish that fluffy tail. Good job. See, I'm exercising by moving those muscles that they don't normally go, but I want to be very careful not to hurt myself. I just want to gently get some exercise and movement in. So good for you. Well, I have some things that I wanted to talk to you and your mom or your dad or your grandma, or your grandpa, or your aunt, or your uncle, whoever your trusted adult is that's with you, that's looking for some fun and so, have some different activities. I had found a picture and I named it Brown Bear. Brown Bear, there's so many different things we can do with this. You can either just simply try to color it in, that's fine. You can use markers or crayons or whatever it is that you have that you have permission to use. But we also, I also printed this out on brown paper and I had a scavenger hunt around the classroom for anything that anyone could find that was a color brown. I would say one, two, three, and they would go out and look for different things that were brown and we'd put it on the brown bear. Those are fun activities. Ooh, the owl. What's the sound? Ooh, ooh, ooh. And the sign. Well, the owl, I made it a lot bigger. And I'll tell you what we did with this particular object is we used feathers to paint. We used a feather like what the owl has 
and we dipped it in some paint and we tried to paint our owl. That's a fun idea. I bet you have a different one that you can come up with too. Deer, uh, the deer was fun. We had him and we used our fine motor skills of using our pincher, fing pincer fingers and picking up brown rice. I made it a little bit bigger and the rice can, white rice can be made into almost any color um, by a certain process that the adults can find out how to do. And we used it by putting glue on first and then picking it up and working really, really hard on getting these muscles ready. <laughs> that was fun. Rabbit. A rabbit can also be found in the forest. And this one, again, I made much, much bigger. And for this one, we found things that were soft. I had things around the room and we had to figure out if it was hard, rough, or soft. And the things that were soft, we used to put next to the rabbit. And then we decided that since rabbits feel soft, we decided to use cotton balls later on to glue onto our rabbit. So there's so many different things that you can do with all these simple, simple ideas. <clears throat> Green frog. Green Frog, we used on this one, again, bigger, but we glued green tissue paper because glued tissue paper can look bumpy, it can look um, smooth, it can have all different kinds of texture based on how you do it. Do you scrunch it up? Do you lay it flat? Whatever you want to do. It's your frog. But we did choose to work on the color green because we wanted to attach the letters to the color. We practiced writing the word forest. You can see these are dotted lines and we used our pencils to start to learn how to write these letters that spell the word forest. And down here, we practiced writing them on our own. Same thing for owl. There's so many different things you can find online. Make sure you have permission. Make sure you have someone with you. Now, I don't know if you're gonna be able to see this one. It's a little tricky. But this is, it says O is for owl, and it's a dotted line all around the letter O and the owl. And we practiced really, really hard trying to connect all the dots. <laughs> I just wanna, do a little plug-in for my moose. I love moose. <laughs> Isn't he cute? Now, here's a fun one that we did. This particular bird is called uh, um, the Eastern Goldfinch, I think. Yep, the Eastern Goldfinch. So what I did in my classroom is I printed out a whole bunch of different types of birds that we can see in the region where we live. And I, myself, I painted them colored them in, used marker, whatever. And I hid them all around the room. And everyone took out a pair of simple binoculars. You can decorate these and make them all your own. But I just wanted to show you what we did. I cut them out and I had them all around the house. Mm, <laughs> I would now, but in my classroom. And we went on a bird hunt and we had to find them. And when we found a bird, I asked them for details. What color is it? Is it big? Does it have um, a beak? The word for sign language for bird is this. And we used our words in our mind to help come up with a description. That's a way or a word that we say to describe, to tell about what we were seeing if we didn't know the name. Because how you use your words is so important so that other people can understand you. And then sometimes, if we really wanted to go on a learning adventure, I would have the children tell me what they saw without me looking at it, and I'd try to draw a picture based on what they said. <laughs> That shows you how important our words are. Oh, that was fun. 
We also made this little guy. And at the time, this is a pattern that you can find online, and it didn't have a fish. But I told them a story about a raccoon that was so hungry and he loved to eat fish. So I had the raccoon and I told everyone that there were fish around. They took out their binoculars and had to go on a fish hunt. And the first one that came back with a goldfish or an orange fish got to feed the raccoon. I would call out different colors and they'd have to go and find those. Oh, there's so much fun. Oh, well, we made a craft using um, shapes, triangle, ovals, circles. You can see how they all came together. And I told them step by step, not using my hands, but only my words because they had to listen for the right part by the shape and put it together to make an owl. Oh, it was so much fun. We also made some cards of, I don't know if you can see that. It's a woodpecker. And I made two cards. And we played our own game of trying to match up. Here's another one. Do you know what that is? P U. Is that you? Or is that me? No way, it's the skunk. <gasps> An owl. A deer. Ooh, wait till you see this one. Here's another one that lives in my area. A bluebird. The bear. The beaver. A rabbit. The golden finch. The raccoon. And the moose. Well, we also played um, you know, a game where we had to remember where they were and put it together to make a match. There's a lot of things that you can do. We even took time and gave everyone a questionnaire. This is a question to ask their friends or the other teachers in the room because we wanted to do practice our math, practice our speaking, remembering, and everything about it. It says, have you ever slept in a tent? Now you can make that question anything that you want, but we chose to say, have you ever slept in a tent? And this column says yes, this one says no. And we would have to add up, everyone would have to add up how many said yes and how many said no. And we tried to see, did they match? Didn't they match? What number did they come up with? And that was a fun math game that we played also. This was one, it's called Animal Tracks. This one's a little bit more difficult, but see all these little cute little footprints? Those are all different footprints that different animals make. And then we had to match up whose footprint did we see on the ground. Now, when I went hiking, remember I told you I went hiking over the weekend? I did see a lot of footprints in the mud because it had recently rained, so the ground was a little bit wet in some areas. I saw a deer print. We saw lots of squirrel prints. There's a lot of things if you slow down and take a look around you and take a deep breath and be thankful that you have the time to be able to do that and that you're healthy enough to go out. It's amazing what you can see around you. We also made this a matching game. No big deal. This one you tear off. We put them in a big pile to make it a little bit harder. I would give out clues about this, this animal. I'd point to this and I'd give a clue that helps describe that animal and they would have to think about what they were listening to and go and find the right one. I had all of them off at the same time. That's really good listening skills. So those are fun games and we did animal habitat and it would show us 
it would break it down into grasslands and rainforest and desert and arctic tundra where it's really cold. And I had a list of all the different animals and we would have to put them in the right spot. That was a great game I'm remembering. That was a little bit harder. But that's okay, because you can do it. Okay, well, I'm ready for a story. I hope you are. Are you ready? Get yourself all ready, cozy up, and get ready to hear this story called Night and Day. And this is by Katherine Ripley, and it's illustrated by Debbie Perna and Brenda Clark. Thanks for that, guys. Thanks for sharing your talents and skills and abilities. Night and day. I'm going to try to move over a little bit so you can see. A spring day was about to begin. Across the meadow and over the pond, a lone owl flies. After a busy night of hunting, he's headed home to the woods to sleep. We were talking about that before. Owls sleep during the day when everything else is just starting to wake up, including you and me. As the sun rises, many animals in the woods stretch and stir. Soon the morning air echoes with a loud tapping noise. A father woodpecker pecks on the tree in search of food for his chicks. I have been hearing so many woodpeckers where I live. They are in search of food. They must be so super hungry. And that means all the insects are starting to wake up also. Have you ever heard a woodpecker? It sounds like this. I wonder if you can hear that. Like that, right? That's the woodpecker on the wood. He uses his long beak. Rat-a-tat-tat, the woodpecker hammers with his long, sharp beak. He uses his tongue to collect the juicy black ants that are in the tree. Wow, that's an amazing ability that I might be thankful I don't have. Hmm. <laughs> the sun soon warms the air. Three fox kit kits come out of their den to play. In a shady thicket, Baby hares sleep the day away. Porcupines curl up on a branch of a tree to sleep in the warm sun. Ooh, that sounds so good to me right now. Nearby, a fawn hides in the tall grasses. The woodpecker flies to his nest. So there's so many things happening in this picture. There's the the fawn, that's the baby deer. Here are the fox. The woodpecker. Oh, and there they are. The porcupine. Who don't want to surprise them either. They have really sharp quills that shoot out and can hurt us. Who knew? <gasps> Look, there's baby birds up in the tree. There's so many things happening. It's meal time for the woodpecker. Their father shoves ants into their open beaks. Next, the mother will bring them food. A dragonfly darting over the pond is also very hungry. She's hunting for mosquitoes for breakfast. Oh, good. Oh, I hope they catch as many of those mosquitoes as they possibly can. I can't believe I already have been bitten by some already and I'm so itchy. You know, that itch that keeps itching. One minute guys, sorry about that. Ooh, the dragonfly is not alone at the pond. Hidden in the cattail plants, tiny frogs called spring peppers are sleeping. A turtle 
eats weeds and ducklings wade into the water to swim. A kingfisher dives down to catch a fish. A water snake is about to grab a big frog. A blue heron wades into the water to fish for his morning meal. Oh my, do you see what I am seeing? A snake. Do you remember that one? Did you know that some of them are really good swimmers? And look at what they're after, a frog. So let's remember that. Note to self, those snakes are after something small. They're not looking for me. <laughs> but there's so many cute things. I love the turtles. I love when I see them all out on a log, enjoying the sun. They're warming up and they love to take a nap there. In the middle of the day, many animals rest. The dragonfly light, lights on a flower in the meadow. That means like lands and takes a little bit of a break. A groundhog moves slowly. A mouse is fast asleep. The afternoon passes and the sun sets. It's time for the mouse to begin her day. She sniffs the air for signs of danger and leaves her nest to look for a meal. Good. Oh boy. Soon the meadow is full of many hungry animals. A snake, a weasel, an owl, a fox, and a skunk are all in search of a meal. The snake hasn't eaten all week. But the owl sees the mouse first. Talons, like his arms with his, and his fingers with his claws, they're outstretched and the bird hurtles down silently. Uh-oh, looks like they're both in a rush to get their meal. Do you see the snake and the owl? Uh-oh. Run, mouse, run! <laughs> A mouse jumps to safety just in time. The other mice in the meadow sense the danger and disappear into their holes. Tonight, the owl will stay hungry. Wah, wah. Sorry, Mr. Owl. Nighttime at the pond is filled with the sound of many frogs singing. A female peeper listens to the male peeper song. Peep, 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 peep. I've told you in the past, I love that sound of the frog singing at night. It's just starting to get dark, but it's not nighttime yet. And the sound to me is a very happy sound. I love that sound. I hope that you get to hear it. Let me know what you think. A hungry raccoon hearing the peeper singing arrives at the pond for a nighttime meal. Suddenly the peepers are silent. They're almost invisible in the cattails. A crayfish will be easier to catch. Now, these are the cattails. Do you see them? If you look real careful, I'll hold it still. You can see the frogs hiding. And now they're quiet, so they can't be heard either. But he can see the crayfish. Crayfish uh, is along the bottom of the water. He'll eat that too. A hare arrives for a sip of cool water. The frogs stay so still that the hare does not know that they are even there. Oh, imagine us trying to have to stay still for a long period of time. How long have you ever been able to stay still? I wonder who would win, the frog or you? <laughs> The hare hops toward the woods to nibble on his favorite patch of ferns. The woods at night are a good place for sleeping, but not all animals are asleep. A porcupine and her baby munch on the bark of a tree. Hmm. A bat swoops through the trees in search of insects to eat. Ooh. Those are good to have in your backyard, especially if you have a lot of mosquitoes and different kinds of bugs. 
That's our good, helpful friend to have. The hungry mother fox sniffs along the hare's trail, but the hare catches her scent in a flash. He escapes on a trail through the grass. Wow, there is so much activity happening all the time outside at night and we don't usually hear it. High above the woods, the owl glides through the sky. Another spring night is over. A new day is about to begin. Well, that's funny. We don't usually think about a new day beginning at night. Have you ever thought about that? Well, for a lot of other animals, it does. Like the owl and all the other ones that we talked about that um, were in our story today. And there's a lot of different things that happen that we miss because we're sleeping. And that's okay because we need to sleep and we usually sleep when it's dark and we get up when it's bright and early in the morning again. That's just the way it is and that's okay. But now you're learning that just because you went to sleep doesn't mean that everyone everywhere and all the animals stop at the same time. So that's part of being in this world. That's what makes the world go round. So I hope that you had some fun, that you have some ideas about some fun things that you can do. You heard some songs that you can help write. You can be the author of some songs. So look around you for animal footprints. Maybe make your own. There's so much that you can have fun with and I hope that you do. And when you do, remember, it's just a learning adventure. And I'm so glad that we're getting to do that together. Have a great day and go on an adventure and tell me about it. Bye.